For more on the company's numbers and the outlook this year, we want to bring in Lynn Good, who is the chair, the president, and the CEO of Duke Energy. And uh, Lynn, it looks like your numbers came in better than anticipated for a few reasons. Why don't we run through them one by one? First up, higher electric volumes, more usage? Yes, and you know, Becky, good morning. We continue to see strong growth in our regulated utilities. Uh, in the states that we operate, three are in the top six in the U.S. for population migration. So we had about 2.5% volume increase, residential, commercial, and industrial, which was a part of the strong results this year. That tells you that the economy overall is doing well. You guys have to be a pretty good gauge of what's happening. Uh, we have seen very strong growth. Uh, of course, we're cautious as we think about 2023, as every business leader is, but we have not yet seen a slowdown in the consumption of electricity. Okay. Another positive thing you had going for you in the quarter was lower operation and maintenance costs. Was that because inflation has come down? Is that because you didn't need to fix as many things? What happened? We continue to work very actively, Becky, on operation and maintenance costs to control those costs, not only as uh, a way to reduce the price of electricity long-term for our customers, but also to be good custodians of our resources. As we've put new technologies in place, particularly on our grid, we've been able to save costs, and we see that continuing as an important part of driving growth and lowering costs to customers going forward. And finally, the other thing you had going for you this past quarter was favorable weather. It was not as cold as anticipated. Uh, energy prices overall came down. If you were looking at uh, WTI or probably more importantly, natural gas, how much of that played into this? We did have positive weather for us. That means a bit colder than expected in the fourth oh. quarter. Um, you know, commodity prices are something we've been chasing all year. I'm pleased to see some of those prices coming off in 23, which will be a benefit to our customers. One of the things that I was shocked, Lynn, was seeing that you guys are actually asking for a re rate uh, decrease for customers in some places like Indiana. Um, that shocks me. I didn't think anybody ever rolled back prices. What happened? I think you're looking for a decrease in residential bills of more than 15%. Becky, it's all driven by commodity prices. As we um, digest the increased costs of gas and coal that occurred in 2022, those prices were put into place for customers. In a place like Indiana, we reset price every quarter. Well, now those prices are coming off. And as those prices come off, we are just delighted to, in, to decrease price to customers uh, so that they can feel the benefit that we're seeing in the commodity markets. So it's been, you know, in a challenging period, as you know, with commodity prices, and we're pleased to see the prices coming off. Lynn, one of the headwinds you've been facing, though, is, is higher and, and rising interest rates. How has that impacted your business? What do you do to manage it? Rising interest rates are a key issue in our business because we're very leveraged, Becky. The amount of capital that we spend, extraordinary, $65 billion planned over the next five years associated with our clean energy transition. It just means we need to look for ways to drive costs out of our business. And so we undertook an initiative in 2022 that will deliver $300 million of savings in 2023, just being more efficient in our corporate operations, relooking at service levels, relooking at our investment and IT and the way we undertake those projects. And it's that reduction of costs that is really helping us weather the storm of increased interest rates.